Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the precipice of what might just be a very big historic moment in the video game business uh, based on the rumors from last night, uh, Sunday evening, where we're hearing more games are coming to PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch from Xbox Game Studios, where so far it's been primarily rumors about Sea of Thieves or Hi-Fi Rush, still unconfirmed, mind you, but something where they're seemingly small enough or they make sense on paper for, say, Sea of Thieves being a live service game, Hi-Fi Rush maybe not selling that well a la carte and it's already penetrated enough customers on Game Pass and so it's, it's sad saturated there, so why not sell it to a wider audience? Uh, but in this case, we're talking about bigger titles like Starfield or, say, Indiana Jones, or potentially more Xbox Game Studio titles, maybe even all of them. So if you saw these rumors from last night, let's go over exactly uh, what was said, how it was said, and then we'll talk more broadly about what this means or what it could mean. So uh, this initially kicked off with a report on XboxEra.com. Uh, they put out this exclusive report about Starfield coming to PS5, and according to their sources, it will release after the Shattered Space expansion for Xbox and PC. The report also mentions that Microsoft has allegedly invested more into PS5 dev kits, and senior leadership at Microsoft has been recently debating the pros and cons of exclusivity, which has caused some unrest internally, with some not being happy about that move. Uh, also, they mentioned Hi-Fi Rush is tentatively scheduled for a Q1 release of this year on PS5 and Switch. Then, just an hour later, The Verge report came out where they were citing a source familiar with Microsoft's plans uh, that Bethesda is considering bringing Indiana Jones and the Great Circle to PS5 after it releases on Xbox, so it could be a very short window, of, uh, a short window of exclusivity. Uh, but that's what they're claiming there, and that also a new multi-platform approach for certain Xbox games is happening right now, which leads us uh, into more of the speculation territory. But we're hearing from a few people that it might be more than just a handful of games. So Andy Robinson of VGC said he heard that more is coming beyond what's been reported so far, and then Jez Corden of Windows Central said he's heard from different sources about it being either some games or all games. As in, there's some conflicting words of exactly how this is going to play out, and quite frankly, I think that's kind of a good place to leave it, because uh, while there's a few other tweets I could bring up or whatever the case is, there's really not much else that needs to be said. Uh, we can probably leave it there until Microsoft provide some kind of official comment on exactly what they are going to do and how they're going to do it. Um, and for all I know, this might be uh, outdated by the time I upload this video. Microsoft does tend to be uh, very reactionary, and they do try to get ahead of these things by putting out official statements. I mean, only a few days ago, there was a rumor about uh, the Xbox president, Sarah Bond, that she was in some way going to do this uh, sometime in the spring, which I think is maybe too far out now from, I guess, what's been being discussed, which is a lot of noise, understandably, for what could be a very big turning point in the game's business. We have a major platform holder that is, in a way, sort of submitting to the idea that their their platform is simply not selling well enough and that their software would probably be better served releasing on multiple platforms, which ideally that's what this is about, right? I mean, Microsoft is a business, and um, honestly, I don't want to be that guy, but it kind of dials back to like a few weeks ago when we talked about this on LTPS when when the Hi-Fi Rush rumor initially kicked off, I've had a growing feeling for a, a while that there's got to be some serious corporate pressure above Phil Spencer, who is the CEO of Microsoft Gaming. Um, but there's got to be, you know, some uh, senior leadership above him that is simply, you know, asking for something out of this division, uh, especially when they've already put a significant uh, a significant chunk of change into the division. Uh, although I would make the argument that it's not been given enough time to sort of see meaningful change since games take a very long time to make. We can even go back to acquisitions from 2018 when Microsoft was really starting to do this major, you know, merger and acquisition activity. Um, even then, it's, just, it's still simply not enough time to sort of build this new foundation and identity of all these studios to maybe make a meaningful push in the space where, you know, Xbox as a console would be worth you know, considering or worth buying or maybe switching over to and have Game Pass be a big part of that model. And but that's always been the case, right? That's what they want to do. But I digress. The point is, um, it, it seems like that's probably what's happening here. Uh, that would be my guess, because what's really fascinating about this news is that this must have been a very recent decision. And I say that because while the writing has been on the wall for a number of years, 
I guess going back to the start of this generation where Series X, we have seen that it's not been performing all that well, but the ABK deal we saw only as recent as a year ago that they very much were intending on still doing exclusivity. So I, I guess to sort of surmise the entire thing, right, to really recap the entire generation, we did see that, yes, Xbox hardware this generation has been underperforming in a lot of, I mean, big key areas, right? That being sales on a launch line basis to previous consoles. It's been a little alarming that it's not keeping up the sales pace with something like Xbox One, which didn't do nearly as well as Xbox 360. Also, year-over-year -year growth targets for Game Pass, console sales, revenue, a lot of this is just not hitting their internal targets. Game Pass has reached a, a saturation point on console. It's eventually going to reach that on PC. For years, Microsoft has attempted to get Game Pass on PlayStation and Nintendo. We know they want to do it, but they're making very little progress. And that brings us to the Activision Blizzard acquisition, where during the merger process, we knew as recently as last year, they were still committing to an, to an exclusive strategy. You know, Starfield, while never publicly confirmed as a PS5 game, it would surely have launched on PS5 if it were not for the ZeniMax acquisition. So that's, that's one thing to sort of predate uh, the ABK deal. But during the ABK deal, we, we knew Red fall was coming to ps5 we knew disney had an agreement that uh, indiana jones would be multi-platform up until the zenimax acquisition where microsoft was able to amend that deal as in they were able to secure exclusivity they wanted to do that uh, we clearly saw the roadmap for games like elder scrolls 6 being exclusive we saw emails and chat logs from senior xbox leadership discussing exclusivity weighing the pros and cons but still favoring exclusivity we knew microsoft was unwilling to sign any larger commitment to sony about various IP staying multi-platform, Sony being a direct competitor, of course, they're going to oppose the deal the entire way through, which they did, but we did see internal emails between Phil and Jim, where Jim did make it clear that he wanted more games to be, you know, sort of uh, assured to the platform, which Phil was not willing to do, but eventually they settled on a 10-year agreement knowing that the deal was going to go through, but the point is, everything in that process showed that they were still looking to do uh, traditional console exclusivity and uh, it seems like something now has broken the camel's back, which is probably a culmination of everything and maybe a few other things like having ABK on board and seeing the, the running costs of the entire organization and uh, what that would mean for you know, doing games day and date on Game Pass and not shipping anywhere else, which they were surely looking at all those numbers anyway during the entire uh, merger process. It's not like they didn't know that going into uh, acquiring them, but you know, bringing them on officially and having that liability officially um, maybe seeing Starfield release and uh, maybe th that didn't do nearly as well uh, in terms of not only a la carte sales, but the sort of Game Pass customer acquisition that it did wasn't nearly as much as they were hoping it would do. Granted, it's a, you know, a new unfamiliar IP, so it might not have the uh, familiarity that a Call of Duty would, but um, you know, maybe it's all these things that kind of built up, and then also, like I mentioned, corporate pressure above Phil, um, and and that's where like I have some concern because it, it just it's a matter of like games take a very long time to make, right? And so it, it just there wasn't really enough time here, right? They, I still think it's like they they just got Zenimax Media, like again they shipped Starfield, okay, but um, you know it's gonna take. A long time for multiple games to come out and new IPs to be released and to have those be a new foundation and image and brand for Xbox and and so it's almost like we have to go through an entire platform cycle for all these studio acquisitions to make a meaningful difference in the traditional console space and that's where the real concern is coming from right if we're you know theorizing the idea that we've got uh, you know historically all these Xbox properties and all these acquisitions that were supposed to be for uh, Xbox exclusivity, if they're all going to go to PlayStation 5, then why would you buy an Xbox? And, um, you know, that's a serious concern to have for what would be a very dedicated Xbox customer or prospective Xbox customers. Certainly for that camp, right? If you're looking to buy a console, you would probably buy the one that's going to be able to play all the PlayStation exclusives and also the Xbox ones, uh, but Game Pass would not be on there. So in theory, you've got like the ecosystem at play for Microsoft and maybe that's in their head, that's what they're you know, thinking is still going to be, uh, what's gonna keep Xbox relevant. Um, 
but still, if you are an existing customer, let's say you're a diehard, you put a lot of money into this platform, uh, you've built a digital library, you've been a you know feeding into the fandom for a long time, and you you just you know this is concerning news in that if this builds enough irrelevancy long term for Xbox and their hardware to where Microsoft is maybe looking at exiting hardware, not saying that's happening now, tomorrow, or even five, 10 years from now, but if it keeps going downhill and they eventually do exit hardware and you've got somebody that's been with Xbox One and up buying all these games, you know, then what does that mean for all your purchases? Is there any kind of uh, login that is going to be available for that customer to still access their games uh, through cloud or PC or, if they're shipping on PlayStation, will they have some kind of uh, license transfer program, which I, I would suspect probably not, especially since there's a, a majority of titles that would not even be able to uh, be a part of that program anyway. So it's like, that's a concern, but we don't want Sony to eventually become the only high-end console manufacturer. Uh, not even so much a matter of like, oh, they'll get to do whatever they want, because mind you, if Microsoft, you know, if Xbox did go away at some point, Sony still has their own KPIs that they have to hit, right? I mean, if, if, if for whatever reason they're not selling enough uh, of a PlayStation 6 or if people are not spending enough money on PS6, I mean, Sony has said this much before. Broadly speaking, anything that keeps people off of PlayStation is competition to them. They're in the, they're in the entertainment business. So even though they're not traditional direct competitors where it's like Microsoft with a similar priced box with the same kind of games and services. And we all know why comparisons are made there, but you know, Nintendo is a competitor, PC, mobile, Netflix, you know, things like anything entertainment based. That's the business that Sony's in. So if they're not hitting, you know, their own numbers, then they're not going to be completely left unchecked here is the point I'm trying to get across here. But we still don't want that to be a matter of losing a direct competitor and giving them just a little bit more leverage on, um, you know, certain things where if you want to buy a console and that's something Sony can get away with maybe pricing it a certain way or approaching software a certain way or services. I mean, we don't want it to be like that. Um, and so while this may sound, while this sounds like great news for somebody that primarily plays PlayStation, because you're not really doing much of anything except now maybe getting access to all these games that uh, we either did not have before or games that for the past few years, we were actually wondering, are these games going to go exclusive because they were picking up multi-platform publishers, right? So, I mean, I in the short term, this may be good news, but it's a, it's a really uh, unexpected play. Initially, when I, I saw all this go down, my, my gut thought was like, this is not really, I would not consider this good news between either platform holder. It, it appears to me as though Microsoft is maybe unwilling to make that long-term commitment um, of building a better foundation and future for Xbox, even if that does come at the expense of what I was always against, which was picking up all these multi-platform studios. I always said like, eh, it's not really what I would, con it's not how I would do it or how I would want it to play out. You know, I always advocate for building new studios and building new IP and that can be a, a fresh identity that doesn't come at the expense of another platform holder. And they all do like third party stuff occasionally. So I know people like to bark at the timed exclusive stuff, but they all do it. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying like when it comes to uh, new stuff, right? Build new teams, new studios, new IP, but like that's risky, right? That's a very risky thing. And what these companies nowadays are looking to do is decrease the risk and uh, just make safer bets, safer guaranteed bets. And it, it would appear as though Microsoft is maybe looking to finally do that with the Xbox brand. And a very safe bet would be releasing your games on PlayStation and just making a boatload of money in the short term. And it remains to be seen if, uh, you know, long term, that would be a bad thing. But I would, it would appear as though that could be not a, a great move. But We'll leave the conversation there. Obviously, fire off. There's going to be a lot of people talking about this one, but uh, for now, that's kind of where I'm sitting on it uh, as this news like just popped up, right? <laughs> so we'll wait and see what Microsoft says, but I hope their language is clear, concise, and paints us a better picture of the Xbox future, which will also certainly influence PlayStation uh, in a big way as well. Mm -hmm.